do this. So today we're doing something a little different and you're gonna see a few videos like this on the channel. We're introducing my car today. So this is a 2005 Subaru Baja Turbo. Naturally five speed from factory and it's got some fun bits done to it. And today we're gonna basically talk about what this is and what it's gonna be. Let's start with why I have it to begin with, right? That was a question that Jake asked me. So I wanna say 2018, I decided I wanted to get away from Volkswagens and Audis and I got my first Subaru WRX. It was a 2004 wagon. Uh, I had that car for two years. Insert picture Yeah, here. We'll put a picture of the car up maybe a few clips of it running. And that was my introduction to turbo Subarus. I've had several Audis of different turbo denominations and I decided to mess around with a little Japanese. So I had a 2004 WRX. Uh, I didn't stay stock, not even a little bit. Got the car for 2,100 bucks, which at the time was a stellar deal and even now would be even even better deal. And got it for 2100 bucks. The car was sitting for a little while and we got it back up and running. I bled the full fuel system, put fresh fuel in it, and it ran. After that, I decided it's time for me to start modifying the car. So that car received, well, in its final iteration, it had a front mount, a Blausch one and a half dominated turbo, it had a turbo inlet. 1050 ID injectors, external waste gated, and made 350 with a 25 swap. <laughs> In the car as well. So I removed the two liter, put a 25. The car made about 350 to the wheels. Uh, it was on air suspension fully, you know, Stancy boy kind of thing. And came a certain point in 2020 that, was it 20? No, 21, because we're in 23 now. So in 2021, I decided it was time for me to part ways with that car. And I found this legend and I've always wanted a Baja. This car was absolutely bone stock. It had the factory air box factory five speed and the guy was looking for 15,000 for it. I ended up trading him my WRX and I ended up keeping my air suspension, management struts, so on and so forth. So all in all, I ended up making about 4,000 back from the car and I got this as well. It is a rust free 2005 factory turbo factory five speed Baja and Knowing what I knew about the WRX platform, I kind of started to apply the same fundamentals into this. So this car now has a Garrett 3071R, externally wastegated. It's front mounted on a custom kit that I made myself. So unfortunately, unlike the WRXs, the Baja doesn't have a designated tuning or performance parts catalog so you kind of have to mix and match and try to figure out what works for you so this car has got a front mount out of a Corey's STI actually so it was a front mount that was originally on Corey's STI I took the core from it so the front core is in here and one set of pipes from the front mount kit that he had the rest were all pieced together piping. You can see it in the corner over here. I have a bunch of miscellaneous intercooler piping and everything else there. That's the front mount kit that I have on here. Right now it's currently just running on a base map. I have a tune appointment uh, later this month. I'll take you guys along the ride for that. And expect it to make around 380 to 400 to the wheels is the goal. This is gonna be a go and blow kind of <coughs> Uh, tuning session. I want this to make the most amount of power on what it has right now. It's running 1300 cc injectors 
It's got, like I said, the 3071R from Garrett in there with an ATP housing. Oil pan is a Killer B. So I have a Killer B oil pan. I have an STI oil pump. So it's a EJ25 with B25 heads. So it's ideally speaking, the same STI engine that came in the 04 STI um, put into a truck body. And the intake manifold being an STI doesn't change a single thing. They're identical. There's no airflow gains. Um, I do have TGV deletes from IAG with aftermarket IAG rails and parallel lines running an AEM 100, I think it's 100 or 1000, I think it's an AEM 1000 fuel pressure regulator uh, for this entire thing. For a fuel pump, I have a 340 AEM and that's an E85 capable pump and I have E85 capable lines and injectors. So if I ever decided to go E85, I'm already provisioned for it, but that's something for the future. So yeah, that's pretty much what we have in front of us here today. So what in, so what led you to decide to do a Baja rather than actually just going from a WRX to an STI like most people do? Because when it comes down to a lot of people, they'll buy a Rex, they'll build it to what it's capable of, and then they just kind of move on to an STI because they want to just build horsepower easily instead of having to do a six-speed swap, a rear yeah. diff swap, anything you would have to do to build more horsepower with a WRX. What led you to decide this rather than just going that route? So... For one, obviously it's gonna come down to the most important thing and everybody can agree with is price, right? When it comes to the price of these cars in comparison to an STI, granted the Baja is not a cheap platform to get into. Uh, there's a lot of fanboys out there. Obviously here I am one of them as well. There's a lot of fanboys out there when it comes to Bajas, but just like the FXT, just like the 06 Saab 92X, just like the Legacy GTs, these came with the 2.5 turbo motor from factory, just like an STI. So fundamentally speaking, from the engine alone, it is an STI with the exception at the stock uh, format is the turbo is a TDO4 instead of VF39 at the time. And it has a smaller top mount intercooler than the STI. A few other differences to mention would be these uh, top feed injectors or side feed. I mean, it all depends. There's no definitive answer on what STIs came with between 04 to 07, but the STI injectors were a little bit bigger than what this one is. But if I had thrown a VF39 in here and an STI top mount, it would have made the same exact power as a stock STI at the time. So that's kind of the reason why I went with this instead of an SCI. It's just, I've always had an affection for the Baja. Plus, I mean, it's also kind of cool having unicorns. I yeah. mean, I'm slightly biased. I have a 92X Aero, and that's another one of those unicorn cars yeah. that Subaru has. So owning unicorns is definitely a cool thing. Plus you have that opportunity. You actually get to build something that's a little bit different than what everybody else does. Cause while you do see people that do have these Bajas that are built and they do fun stuff to them, most of the time, they're usually built for off-roading or Baja-style builds, and opposed to Pedro, who decided to lower it and build it for a different type of power. So there's also that kind of, like, benefit of that. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the Baja as a platform falls off of the legacy platform from 2000 to 2004. Unfortunately, those legacies from that generation they didn't come turboed in the united states in japan you could even get a twin turboed model of the legacy in this chassis but just like everyone else everyone has wrx's everyone has sti's heck even the lgt communities have been completely flooded with people you don't really see a lot of people making power and lowering and stancing out a subaru truck that had a production line of four years. You know, you, you just don't really see it. And that's kind of why I wanted it. I've always thought that this was like a quirky little platform that was capable. And knowing that it came with a 2.5 from factory, it was, a, it was a good foundation. Now, like Jake mentioned, the SCI comes with a six speed. This has a WRX six speed in it from 2015. That's one of the things that I did do was, I 
converted this from a five speed, which was a 3.64, or actually correction, it was a 4.44 gear ratio down to a 411 gear ratio out of a 2015 WRX. I ended up spending out of pocket $80 to do that transmission swap. So for me, it was a no brainer, you know? So that's where we are with this car. And you know, it's got a few other things that we've done throughout the time. The engine bay, I repainted it. It used to be a purple color. I'll insert a picture, it's disgusting. Now I kind of resprayed it crudely while I had the engine out recently. This engine is on 20 miles since the rebuild. We just took it out this morning and she's doing great. It needs a tune. That's the last thing that we're waiting on is just the tune. And inside of here, I've also done a few custom bits. It's running an 08, 08 STI seats. It's got custom stitch steering wheel, you know, the stereotypical Crown Royal shift boot, because everybody loves that. And one of the most special things that I've done in this car, which was my first attempt at doing it, was the star headliner. And that is something that I did do on this car. Right there, you guys can see it. And I decided to throw my little touch right there, put a Baja here, there's a Baja above us here as well. And suede wrapped it. So it's a suede wrapped headliner with the star lights. I can control it, make it change colors. I can make it go with audio. It's just what I preferred. And then custom side exit exhaust. They're on both sides and they're fitted to a 2018 STI mid pipe. So from the down pipe to the axle, basically, is an 18 STI exhaust, similar to the one that we have over here, if you want to show them. So, As you guys can tell, uh, this is definitely a built, not bought kind of place. Yeah, um, which stands true with our name as well. You know, you got to build your own builds and that's kind of what we're at. So this is virtually what the mid pipe looks like underneath that exhaust. This is a 2008, similar format, similar design, but you can see why it has the dual exits on the sides. It is a direct bolt up. The hanger lines up without any hassles, without any fights. But yeah, this is, this is a definitely built, not bought kind of car. Uh, it's registered, insured, inspected in Massachusetts. This thing is a daily driver as far as anyone is concerned. Nico for Christmas got me these wheels. These are some 19 inch rotiform wheels. Very, very good looking wheels. I think that they look great on this car. And one of the most recent mods that I've done on this car is that I've switched it to a WRX, uh, Ty Owl, I guess it's called the TR model or limited where it has the four pots in the front and the two pots in the rear. So it's got upgraded brakes all around. Can't go fast if you can't stop. So that's kind of where we are with that. Subaru racks, yeah. Those came with the car, believe it or not. Um, yeah, this thing this thing is sick. And it's got the big scoop, if you yeah. didn't see that. I actually had to get that imported from, I want to say it was Ukraine. This was prior to, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure this came from Ukraine or Kazakhstan. It was one of the two places, and that's actually made for this car. Direct bolt in from there. It's made it into VIP shows a few times. It has, yeah. So this was actually VIP at the Broke East show. Um, this was in the summer of 2022. <laughs> And then we also have what well had this car in the show for Wicked Big Meat, which is this Subaru of New England hosted show um, that happened in Connecticut as well. And this was also in VIP for that show. We got we got beat. We got beat. We were in the class of best other, and unfortunately, this did not win best other at the time. There was another Baja that got second place. That was a, an STI six-speed Brembo swapped Baja. Don't know the power levels. Don't know anything about the engine specs on that car. But it beat us. And then first place went to a 
kit car. What was what were those kit cars? The the, the Subaru powered kit cars. Oh, the yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember. I'll insert a picture right here somewhere so you guys can get a relation for it. It's basically a kit car that you buy for like fifteen thousand, ten thousand dollars, and it's powered by a Subaru power plant, so it won best other. I don't ask questions. That's just how they wanted to judge the show, and that's how it ended up. But we are putting this car back again this year into the show. We're going to try to get into as many as we can as far as VIP specifically. We want to get some recognition around the car, and we want to take you guys along for the ride. This is not its final form. Ideally speaking, right now I'm working on trying to figure out an air suspension setup for it. There's nothing. Airlift makes rear struts for it because it's a truck and it needs to tow things. So they have rear struts that are direct bolt-in from Airlift, but for the front struts, as of right now, I have no solutions. I'm and if you guys it. want to come and meet us and hang out um, yes. in the future, we will be at Broke, we will be at Wicked Big, any of the larger meets in the New England area, possibly down in like the, the uh, lower mid-Atlantic tri-state area like Pennsylvania, Delaware, Jersey, depending on what this year leads us to. But, um, you know, we would love to meet you guys as we uh, kind of grow and so you guys can kind of grow with us because, uh, you know, I know I'm new to this. Pedro and Nico obviously aren't. Uh, neither is Corey. But um, I'm new to this, so I would love to meet you guys and, and learn with you guys as we kind of go through these journeys of all of these, uh, all of our cars that we kind of have hanging out here. So Yeah, yeah, but this will be getting bagged. However I do that, I don't know yet. Bad at we will We will figure it out. And it's kind of like the thing that we do around here. All of our group is pretty much bagged. I had, I had bags in my Rex. Love them, especially for where we live. It's amazing. And it's kind of like what we like to do. So you guys are going to have to stay tuned. Watch a little bit more about it. This is just the introduction of this car. You've already seen a video at this point of us taking this engine out again and putting it back in again. So this is not the last time that you're going to see this car. But figured I'd fill you in on what it has, what it's done to, and how it got to where it is now. So I appreciate you guys watching. I know this is a different style than what we've done, not as action filled, but this car has been on the channel a couple of times. Um, we've never explained what it is. So now you know, I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I feel like I already said that, but I'll say it again. Hit that bell. Hit that bell thing on the behalf of Jake. <laughs> and you guys take care.